gone walking. Um, it's often said that walking is a form of thinking, but is thinking a form of walking? My great-great-uncle, Hyacinth von Wiese, ended his days in a mental institute in Germany. Born in Vienna in 1883, he was diagnosed with schizophrenia several years before the First World War. In the asylum, he began a philosophical work which he believed would solve the problem of life, calling it the willology of the sun. He illustrated his concept with intriguing geometrical diagrams and magically charged visual poetry. He was convinced that he could transcend the borders of his confinement by transforming his drawings into bodily movements. In the Napoleon curve, Hyacinth plotted a map of Napoleon's battles across Europe and connected them with a propeller-shaped curve. He believed that tracing the image several times a day by moving your head in a similar imaginary curve would somehow open a portal into Napoleon's mind. He also claimed to be plagued by a disturbed magnetic polarization of his body. And the only way to correct this disturbance was to perform somersaults in the direction of distant places that were important to him at that time. But these psychosomatic attempts to transcend the boundaries of the asylum What's my place? and his own body would ultimately tend towards silence and catatonia. Unlike Georg Buchner's Lenz, the schizophrenic poet on a walk through the Alps, Hyacinth's visa turns towards a condition of stasis. There is a striking memory of him standing for hours at an open window with a spoon in his hand, staring into the sky and saying, I shall change the position of the stars by an act of will. So perhaps thinking isn't a form of walking, but a form of standing, an attempt to understand and to withstand the abysmal silence that engulfs reality. In Thomas Bernhard's novella, Walking, the act of walking is a fragile means of fending off the inevitability of suicide and madness. Although walking and thinking enjoy one another's company, they can never entirely be reconciled. Walking and thinking do not go side by side, but tread on each other's steps. If we are walking intensively for a long time, deep in an intensive thought, remarks one of Bernhard's characters, then we soon have to stop walking or stop thinking, because it is not possible to walk and to think with the same intensity. His novella, Gehen, which in German means both to go and to walk, is mostly a monologue, monologue by a man called Erler, recounted by his friend. The two friends are on their weekly walk along Kloster Neuburgstrasse in Vienna, but between them, there also stands the absent presence of a mutual friend, Kara, who has recently been committed to an asylum following a nervous breakdown in a clothes shop. An irrational obsession with the quality of a pair of trousers had led him into an inevitable and irre irrevocable state of madness. The episode was witnessed by Erla, now clearly paranoid that it could just as well have been him that had lost his mind. So underlying Bernhardt's prose is the chilling proximity between thinking and madness, the dislocated relationship between thinking and walking, the impossibility of pure embodied thought in motion, shows just how close to disintegration we are at every step. When Kara stops walking, he stands and overthinks a pair of trousers. It is walking which distracts us from where we stand and what we cannot stand. So in this piece, I've taken several words from Bernhard's Gehen and set them walking alongside some words from my great-great-uncle Hyacinth. Between them, Buchner's Lenz will also appear, forever discomforted by his inability to walk on his head. I'll just leave Thomas Bernhard up there, walking. Instructions from Hyacinth. Little finger exercises, good for digestive use. Always go in a clockwise direction on the skin. Mouth closed after tongue presentation. Interior voices may lead to the ego. Do not touch the ruler with a lucky finger. Seeing blue things is always good. Let your eyes gaze in a clockwise direction. Let your eyes go above head height whilst walking. Let's on a walk. Dass er nicht auf dem Kopf gehen konnte. The only unpleasant thing is that I cannot go on my head. If only I could go about on my head, walk upon my head, if only I could go on upon my head, then this day would be going so much better, would have gone and would have been going so much better, so much more bearable to go about on one's head, to go on about one's head. Hyacinth's letter to his father. Dear father, 
it is typical of the family to neglect me, somewhat painful. I sit all day long and into the night contemplating how the astronomically precise method of mathematics is guided from biology through to sociology. I gladly take that journey, but I'm locked up and the human reason required for walking in the open is unfortunately lacking. But I work constantly. I tell you, Father, I am going to solve the problem of life, as the following sequence has made it startlingly clear to me. Umstand and Zustand. To understand Zustand and Umstand is umständlich, but we can get around it. The way things stand to the way it stands as it stands around Umstände and Zustände. These things are around to stand, zustand, as they stand, so they stand around circumstance, and other stances as circumstance, umstands, umstand, circumstances, umstände, as circumstance would stand it. And so there stands their umstand. And just like the way it stands to stand, and so to situate, zustand is a situation states itself in order to stand as it stands, and as one can and could stand it, as much as it can be standed, or in as much as one could have stood it, so to speak. To stand, to stand, can't be stood, situated as it is, as it is to be stated, understood, as one could stand under it, as one could stand, so as to understand and situate, as though one were to stand the situation stated, nor understand its state as situated. And so there stands der Zustand. But thinking is unbearable. And so to think while standing is to situate or to circumstantiate thinking into standing, and no one could stand that. As to think is to stand and bear it. The thinking is unbearable, unendurable, unwearable. Unerträglich is Zustand and Umstand, which is to stay unstandable, as to stand in situ and in circu, is to stand unbearably and to grin and bear it, to bear all and stand the unstandable, unendurable, unwearable, unbearable, unerträglichable, situated, circumstantiated, as it is, to stand as such, it is unbearable, as in it cannot be bared, cannot be weared, but must be bared, and yet one cannot wear the situation stand nor the circumstance as it stands, as one stands thinking of these spots, these sparse, sparse spots, these thin, sparse spots, as one sees in the light one held against the light, as one cannot hold these horsemen up against the light, one cannot stand nor bear nor wear these trousers with these spots, these thin, sparse spots which show as you hold them, these trousers with these spots as you hold them, these horsemen up against the light, these are schutzen stellen. If you think about it, standing, it cannot be standard, this situation, this circumstance, Zustand or the Umstand cannot be stood. Do you understand? And so we fall to walking. For to fall from standing is to fall to walking. And to think away from standing is to walk and go, and go away from standing. And so we go, we gain. We cannot gain from standing. But to go on standing cannot be bad. So we must go on from standing. And so gain, we go, and we go on walking. Thinking, walking, going. Going on walking, to go on walking, is to gain, to go, and also to walk. To go on walking to go on a walk with a bit of talking, and so we gain, and so we go, and are gone, are gone walking. Thank you.